Hi everybody, and we are at our last uh, experiment for Engine 45. I know it's been, you don't want to go, uh, but you could see me again in Mech 202 or Engine 110, uh, but we are at our last experiment, unfortunately. But it's a fun experiment and a very useful one if you want to get jobs, which is uh, basically creating a galvanic cell and looking at corrosion behavior of materials. So, I've got my sample of water. Unfortunately, I used to be able to grab uh, uh, basically, we're going to create a saltwater solution. I used to grab real salt water from Manresa Beach, but there's been shark attacks and COVID, and uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be doing that much <laughs> too too much longer. Uh, but I filled this with 297 milliliters of water. I want to create a 3%, um, actually, not 297, excuse me, 291 milliliters of water. I want to create a 3% uh, weight solution of salt, NaCl. I've got, again, my lucky salt. Uh, from Trader Joe's, not red pepper chilies. So I need to do nine grams. So I'm just gonna kind of shake it in here. Measure out nine grams. Approximately. Experiments are kind of like cooking. Chemists will hate me for saying that. Even though chemists are like, if you're a good experimentalist, you're a good chef. So about nine. So I'm gonna put this in here, stir it with my handy stir rod, which I've already cleaned, believe me. So let's go ahead and stir this. What's the solubility? Are we soluble for salt and water? At least at this concentration. <laughs> you can brag to your Chem 24 professors. Set up, set up, fantastic. So, we are now going to run an experiment, excuse me, and we're gonna create a, basically a galvanic cell. So, we've been working previously, excuse me, with kind of this standard temperature and pressure protocols. So you can use our table that we've introduced in kind of our notes, and you could figure out and calculate the uh, cell potential. But now we're gonna actually create that cell ourselves. So what's gonna be required is, um, we are gonna hook this up. This is a Vernier sensor DAC. Those of you who have taken instrumentation, entering 110 with me, uh, know this well. So we're gonna plug this guy into our computer. And we are gonna use basically this voltage probe, voltage differential probe, to measure the voltage. So as indicated in the lab, our lab handout, we are gonna investigate a number of materials. And the number of materials can be seen here. So let me, excuse me for one second, as I kind of get these out of the package. Here we go. So actually. So you can see I haven't cleaned these in a while. So these are the materials that we're gonna investigate. So we have brass, which is copper and zinc right here. We have, you can kind of tell what's corroding, what's not corroding. Uh, we have copper, Ooh. we have iron, we have aluminum, we have also zinc right here. So we are going to clean these guys up and polish them uh, with sandpaper. And let's go ahead and we'll be right back and do that. So I saved everyone the tedium of watching me uh, basically <laughs> uh, grind those samples, but you always want to grind and uh, basically remove any kind of byproducts because that could affect your voltage potential. So we've got some other materials. Look at this, magnesium. Why don't you want to put magnesium in water? Because it will corrode crazy <laughs> fast and then create magnesium fire. So don't do that, but you can see if you could touch this, it's paper thin. Anyone that touches this, it almost automatically breaks. Gold, on the other hand, seems surprisingly fine. But Anyways, we are gonna create a cell. So we have said in the lab handout that copper is gonna be our cathode. So cathode is red right here. Clamp it up, put it in the water, in the solution. And then we'll take all of our other materials. Let's do brass, for example. Clip it, and we will go ahead and measure the voltage. So you're going to plug this in the computer. We're gonna measure it on the computer, spit out the data file. You'll measure the voltage, then we know what material's corroding if it's positive. We know that electrons are being pulled to the cathode. If it's negative, the anode is actually the real cathode material, so the electrons are being pulled the other direction. 
So we can look at based on electronegativities, which ones will corrode or not. And again, these are different from our standard cell potential because we're not using that solution of uh, their own ions. We're using this salt solution. So data analysis is coming soon. So you would do that for all these different materials and you're gonna get those values. You're gonna create a table and you're gonna write an amazing memo telling me for your application, what material is gonna corrode, what material is not gonna corrode and maybe some Gibbs free energies and spontaneous reactions. Show off your knowledge and corrosion. So that's it. That's our last lab. A nice, nice one to kind of hopefully ease you into kind of our exam three. So you're all gonna do fantastic. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you in Engineering 45 lab and hopefully in person uh, in the fall. If you ever wanna kind of uh, come by, drop by and run one of these experiments yourselves, I'll be happy to do so. All right, have a great one. I'll see you in the next class, hopefully. Or definitely. <laughs> Net 202 is done. Thanks.